Now my sewing machine mat was starting to look a little bit tired so I decided to replace it and share the tutorial with you. So this is it, made to measure for the size of your sewing machine and I've used a reverse applique for the heart there and it's quilted and it's got bias binding around it as well. So it's a great beginner project and it's useful as well because the sewing machine mat can help to stop your table getting scratched but it can also cut down on the sound and the vibration that your sewing machine makes as well. So your materials list is all down below underneath the video in the description box. Let's get sewing. This is going to be the finished size of my mat. So obviously you measure that to the size of your sewing machine so it fits perfectly. So I've cut my two pieces of fabric, one for the top and one for the bottom, slightly bigger for now. Um, but the first thing I need to do is to make up the template for the heart. Now because I can see the size that I want this to be here, I can easily measure that I want the heart to be maybe about that size. Um, so let me measure that. This doesn't have to be exact. So that's about four and a half inches. So I'm going to take a piece of scrap card and just fold this in half and measure approximately where I want the heart to be. So from about that size to about that size. And then I'm going to take just something round and this is just um, a ribbon tube and I'm going to overlap it over the side slightly of my paper and just draw around the edge whoops like so that will be neater in a minute and then from the sideline here I'm going to draw down to well it's just past where I wanted that line to be there so I've, I've kind of got half a heart shape there so because I've folded it in half, I can now cut this out and open it out and I'll have the perfect heart shape, which you can adjust if you want to. So with this one, I think I'd like the V to be a little bit deeper there. So I'm simply going to trim it around a little bit more like so that's the shape that I want. So I'm going to take my outer fabric and I'm just going to give that a quick iron. Actually it's rather wrinkly. And I've got one piece of scrap fabric here. So this can be any kind of fabric, you're not going to see it. I'm going to place my pattern over the top like so, and then just draw all around the outside. I will put a couple of pins in there actually, just to hold it in place. So make sure it's sitting square and then draw around the edge. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of this. And use quite a small stitch, so I've got a 2.2 on my machine. When you come to the point, stop with the needle in the down position and do one stitch straight across and then carry on around the shape of the heart. And that will help the point to be more pointy when we turn it the right side out. So up come the pins. 
and I'm going to cut all the way around the inside quite close to the stitching so maybe an eighth of an inch or two millimeters away from the stitches. And save these pieces because you've got two pieces of heart applique for another project. Now I'm going to push the fabric through the hole and poke out that little corner piece here. And press this with the fabric just on the seam or you could roll it just inside the seam because we just don't want to see this lilac fabric on the outside if you feel like it's not crisp enough then use a little bit of spray starch or water or of course your best press I'm just going to trim this fabric back a little bit at the back and then my square of fabric can go behind here. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of 505 spray and I can use this actually to stop it over spraying onto the table. Put that on the back. You can always pin this if you don't have the spray. And there's my heart. Now, I am going to sew around here, but before I do that, I'm going to place this onto my foam so that when I sew around the heart, I'm sewing through the foam as well, and it'll give a nice depth to the stitches. So again, now I'm just going to sew around the edge of the heart so I can increase the stitch length now I'm going to go up to 2.6 and so Now it's up to you how and if you want to quilt the rest of this. Let me just iron that a little bit. It's um, not very flat in that corner. That's better. So this is up to you. You can echo quilt by carrying on ironing just around here. I'm going to do a little bit of crosshatch because I like that kind of look. So I'm going to do 45 degree lines. So I'm lining up my 45 degree line across the bottom and then I'm going to draw with an erasable pen my lines 
and these are just going to be two inches apart so they're quite a way apart um, if you're using a friction pen like this one always do a little patch test first just to make sure that it's not going to stain or bleach your fabric because sometimes that can happen they're not designed for fabric so ideally I would use um, an air erasable or a water erasable pen or of course you can use your chalks for this as well unless of course your fabric is fine with the friction pen actually I think I might I think I might leave it like that just the diagonal lines so if you wanted to cross hatch and do these again then you can do so I quite like that look just with the diagonal line so that's how I'm going to keep it so I'm going to only sew up to the heart. I'm not going over the heart this time. And I think that's all the quilting I'm going to do for this one. And because I've used a heat erasable pen, I can just iron away the pen marks. If you're using air or water erasable ink, then don't iron over them because they can become permanent. Just got one little loose thread here, one here. Just tidy that up. So now I can cut the edges of the fabric down to the same size as my mat. You could use your rotary cutter, ruler and mat if you wanted to for this, but scissors are handier for me at the moment. Then I'll take the second side of my fabric. Again, I'm going to use a spray just to hold that in place. This is a temporary glue. You can just pin it if you don't want to glue, but these glues come in very handy. So that's an OD505 spray I'm using here. There are other makes. lay that over the top and that's it. And again trim this down to the same size as the mat. If you're not using a basting spray, it would be a good idea at this point to sew all the way around the edge. But my spray is holding that in place very nicely, so I don't need to. Now let's take my binding. So this is a two inch strip of binding, five centimeters, and I need enough to go all the way around the edge. So if you're making a much larger match, you may need to join two pieces together. I'm just going to trim off the selvage there don't need that. Then I'm going to fold the whole thing in half and press. And then I will take the two long sides and fold those to the centre and then fold in half again. So from my two inch strip of fabric I will end up with a trim around my pad of half an inch. So I'm going to start at the bottom on the wrong side. So fold under the edge of your binding. We're going to line up the edges 
and sew along the first crease line here. I'm going to mitre the corner so I've stopped sewing half an inch before the edge of my um, fabric like that and then bend the binding around so that the raw edges line up and you'll form a nice little triangle of binding in the corner here and then carry on sewing and we'll do that on all four corners. When I come back to the beginning here, I'm just going to snip that excess off a little bit more. So it overlaps by about a centimetre or half an inch. And I'm just going to sew over that crease line so that the stitches match. So now when I turn back my corners, I get these lovely, neat, mitered corners. I find that so satisfying. So I'm turning it over to the front side now and I'm going to fold the fabric over so that it overlaps this line here. So I will pop a few clips in here actually. Oops, here we go. So I'm just overlapping that stitch line slightly. I don't want to see that. And then when I come to the corners, I'm going to arrange these into another mitre. So a nice sharp point. And then we'll sew all the way around the edge. And there's my mat finished. So that's a really little simple quilted mat. If that's the first time you've ever used bias binding, this is a really great way of practicing. And if you're making a mat for yourself, don't worry too much about the wrong side because that's going to be underneath your sewing machine and you're not even going to see it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Actually, I hope you use these techniques to move on to maybe make a, um, a lap quilt or a cushion cover to match. I hope you enjoyed it. And I shall see you again very soon. Bye-bye.